Nobody wants to get united. Like, what we gotta do is meet everybody in 149th Street at the bench. There's something about the title King that nobody ever talks about in graffiti. More specifically, we're gonna be talking about why a certain skill level needs to be achieved before you can even be considered a king, and why simply getting up is not enough for the title. But before I do, I gotta give you guys a massive thank you for all the birthday wishes last week. I really do appreciate it. I read all of them, I wasn't able to respond to everybody, but I read all of them and it put a big smile on my face, so thank you guys. But on that note, kings, let's let's kind of get into this topic a little bit. So let's start this off by explaining what exactly a king is. Well, a king is somebody who holds down a specific area, a large area, for a prolonged period of time. They are the dominant force in that area. They get up the most. They don't necessarily have to be the best in that area, but they certainly are of a quality skill level, and they maintain that area. And this means a lot. This isn't something that you just do in one night. This is something that you have to go back to your spots, maintain them, check them, repaint things, re-hit walls, go back over people. Like, you have to legitimately patrol your your area. This is no easy task. For your average teenager who doesn't have any responsibilities, they sure have the time to go ahead and do this. They can go ahead and afford to spend, you know, the weekend or the day or whatever the case might be going out and looking at their spots. But for an adult who's got a job and children, they may not have that time. Some will, of course, but most are not going to be able to do that. This makes the title of king very difficult to achieve. It's difficult to achieve in any place that actually matters. When a king has actually earned the title. It's never a question of whether or not they actually Sorry about that. It's never a question of whether or not they actually deserve the title king. It's self-evident. Everyone can see it. The evidence is on the walls. It's right there for everyone to see. Now, the other quality of a king, aside from getting up and maintaining the area for a prolonged period, is that you also have to have a certain skill level. You can't just be a toy and also be a king. Also, part of being a king is that you are deemed a king. Other people bestow that onto you. Sometimes, if you're fortunate, if you kind of mingle in the graffiti community, another king will pass the title down to you. But not everybody, even in big cities, not everybody mingles with the graffiti community and therefore the title may not always be passed down. With that said, in the case where it's not passed down, people can still bestow you a king. And here's how. You would get up a whole lot for a prolonged period of time, to the point where if you did put a crown on your name, nobody else, both toys as well as very experienced veterans in graffiti, nobody's going to disrespect the crown. Nobody may have bestowed it onto you, but nobody's challenging it either. And listen, I'm not talking about, you know, the random BS toy who comes over and, you know, crosses your name out because they're trying to get fame. I'm not talking about those guys. I'm talking about the people who actually respect the rules. People who you see get up quite a bit. And they're known within the graffiti community. Nobody may have talked to them, but they're known in the graffiti community around your area. These are the people where if they think you're worthy of it, they'll respect your crown. However, if you slip up and you put that crown on your stuff too early, these are also the people who are going to check you and put you right back in your place. This is the graffiti community's way of bestowing a crown on somebody without having to talk to them verbally about it. And this is exactly why it's an absolute necessity for a graffiti artists to reach a certain skill level before being able to put a crown on their work. Because if you're in a small town and you put a crown on your work and you're still a toy, then who's there to check you? Who's there in order to see, are you actually good enough to have that crown? No one. No one with any credibility. Who's gonna cross you out? Some other toy crew that nobody cares about? No. Being a king in a small town or in a country or something like that where there's no graffiti populace doesn't really matter. That crown holds no weight. It holds no value. There's no credibility behind that. Because that graffiti artist hasn't been stress test. That graffiti artist hasn't been put through the ringer. They've had a pretty docile experience in graffiti as far as graffiti is concerned. They haven't had to get up and actually hold down an area. There was nobody to hold it down from. They haven't had to maintain their walls. Who's going over them? <laughs> There's no one else riding in their area. Or at least if there is, there are other toys. Which we'll get into that in a second. Crowns really only mean something if it's in a populated area. If it's in an area where there's other credible graffiti artists who actually pose a challenge. And that brings us to the next point of the video. Your skill level says a lot about your challengers. Let me explain this. If you're a toy and you go ahead and get crossed out by another toy, other toys are going to see that and go, oh, that's that's equal competition right there. Other experienced graffiti artists are going to see that and go, oh, those two toys are beef. 
cheapened. That's equal competition right there. However, if you're a toy and a credible, good quality graffiti artist comes through and crosses you out, well, it's pretty evident to everybody, every onlooker, that you don't stand a chance. This graffiti artist is out of your league. Let's look at a different scenario. Let's say a toy goes over a really good graffiti artist. Somebody with some notoriety, somebody who's credible, somebody who's got some legacy in the community. Every single onlooker is seeing this and going, that toy's out of line. That toy, what is that toy doing? That toy is disrespectful. What, why, why would they do that? However, if another credible, good, high quality graffiti artist goes over yet again another veteran, then people are gonna see that toys and other experienced graffiti artists alike, and they're gonna go, well, that's equal competition. So I say all of this to illustrate the point that if you're a toy, and you put a crown on your work, you have to go ahead and compete with other toys who are your same skill level, and you have to compete with every single experienced veteran in your area. Not to mention the fact you haven't been doing graffiti long enough to hold down an area for a prolonged enough time to warrant being a king, which means every toy challenger that comes up to you is likely equally as qualified to be a king as you are, which is to say, not qualified at all. And every experienced graffiti artist is probably a hundred times more qualified to be a king than you are, despite the fact that they probably don't call themselves a king. And that's a very important thing to understand. In areas that have a thriving graffiti community, you'll see some graffiti artists who have been writing for 30, 40, 50 years, and they don't rock crowns. Ask yourself, why is that? Well, number one, certainly some don't even want the crown. But even in the case of the graffiti artists who have been doing it that long, who do want a crown, many of them understand they're not worthy of it. So how is it a new graffiti artist is going to come around who's been doing graffiti for like two to five years, and they're gonna go ahead and rock a crown on their work when this dude who's been doing graffiti for four decades still isn't rocking a crown because they don't feel they're worthy of it. This was the dilemma that, that I faced. When I was growing up and I was hanging around a lot of graffiti artists, a lot of my mentors' friends, I had three different kings and legends try and pass me down a crown, and I passed it up every single time. Because, I mean, it's self-evident. I, I do not deserve to be a king. Not to, I don't even want to, but even if I wanted to, I have to acknowledge I don't deserve it. Number one, I certainly didn't get up enough or hold down an area enough. I was just your average graffiti artist. And at that time, I certainly wasn't good enough. So when you factor all that in, when I was hanging around people who had been doing graffiti longer than I was alive at that time, how dare I put a crown on my hairstyle or any of my work and take that crown seriously? It was funny because there was another graffiti artist that didn't live too far away who swore he was king. He was around my same age, maybe a little bit older at the time. And he would talk so much crap and Demer would just make fun of him the entire time. I would make fun of him. Literally everybody made fun of him. No one took him serious. Toys, kings, and legends alike clowned on this dude, and he had no idea. He was a self-proclaimed king. He was a toy who put the crown on too early, and because we had actual graffiti artists in our area, they all made fun of him and nobody respected his crown. And that's why you need skill along with the other qualities. That's why no toy and no legal-only graffiti artists can be a king. Kings are people who do graffiti illegally for a prolonged period of time and hold down that area for a prolonged period of time. How long is a prolonged period of time is going to depend on your area. It's going to change depending on the frequency of your area. But that's the basic gist of it. But dudes, that pretty much wraps up today's video. Let me know your thoughts on it in the comments down below. And also, guys, I gotta thank you for the support on the brush packs, man. <laughs> I really appreciate it. Look, check this out. For those of you guys who don't know, I came out with a brush pack and they're really, they're really damn good. I got a link to those in the description down below and also check this out I'm just wrapping up the final draft of the hand style book and I'll be sending it to the editor as well we're trying to get cracking on this this is your last chance to be part of the hand style book so submit your work either through Instagram DM just let me know it's for the hand style book or submit it with the link in the description but this is your last chance to do it because we're wrapping up quick or at least I'm trying to <laughs> anyway dudes you want the best how to do graffiti tutorials anywhere online check out this playlist right up here with more graffiti content right down here and I'll catch you guys back here next week